So when you're shopping around for the right partner in the DSP category, man, this is a category that's evolved so much. But what is important? Well, simplicity, effectiveness, and absolutely the know-how and support that said company can provide you and your technicians. I believe the feature brand today checks off all those boxes. We're talking about audio control, and they've come up with a revised GUI that's really going to help you know, every level of installer and consumer, for that matter, really dial in their system. I've got Matthew Palumbo in the studio with us, and we're going to break down all the new features and take a closer look at the products they have within the DSP category. This is CMA Connected, brought to you by SiriusXM, all about audio control. And it starts now. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another CMA Connected, brought to you by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. And as we journey down the path that is DSP, we've landed on one of those brands that I really hold close to heart because this is a brand that's so, so completely immersed and committed to signal processing from the get-go. And where they are today is just uh, amazing to see what they have to offer. Um, they're known for their incredible reliability. They're known for their support. They're known for innovation. They're known for OEM integration. And all these elements certainly come to play when we're looking at their suite of products within DSP. Now, Matt, we've got a lot to cover. There's some new um, exciting updates to the software. Give us an idea of what we're going to be covering today. Hey, Ben. Yeah, I'm excited to be here and talk all about our DSP products and uh, our updated DM Smart DSP app. You know, there's some really cool stuff that we packed into this app and we've been working on it for a while. You know, one of the biggest things for us is that we are a company that really listens to our end users. And so we've taken in all that feedback over the last few years and uh, what users felt the software was missing, what it could do better. And we've really tried to implement as much of that as we possibly can. So not only that, but we're also going to talk a little bit today about all of our DSP products, both integrated DSP amplifiers and standalone DSPs and all of the cool features and tech that we pack into these things. I mean, we really try to be that brand that supports those dealers, has the features and tech they need, you know, have amazing sound quality and still be a somewhat reasonable price. And uh, that's why our dealers love us, you know, so let's get right into it. All right, Matt, and get into it we will. But first, a quick opportunity for our partner, SiriusXM, to remind you dealers out there why you should love it. And when we come back, i got Matt Palumbo, and we're going deep into audio control. Hey, guys, Ricky Lima here from SiriusXM. I had a chance to speak to some dealers and ask them what they love about selling SiriusXM. Here's what they had to say. Coast to coast coverage. I love SiriusXM for commercial free music. It's a great ad on sale and a profit opportunity. We love selling Sirius XM because you can listen to the same channel coast to coast. Profitability and ease of installation. It's a no-brainer. We love selling Sirius XM for its ease of installation, great profitability, and its reliability. People love it. All right, welcome back, and we're going to get right into it. So, Matt... To establish our conversation, we're talking about something very specific. You know, dealers tuning in, they know we're talking about DSP. But I thought it was important to give you an opportunity to explain, you know, the philosophy that audio control has when it comes to DSP and signal processing in general. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, I mean, with audio control, um, you know, we've been around for well over 45 years now. We're closing in on that 50 year mark. And audio control is really one of the pioneers in signal processing. I mean, we've been doing basically DSP since before DSP was cool, right? Before it was the buzzword in the industry. Um, audio control started out processing signal way back in the 80s. And, you know, we were one of the first companies to do it in the mobile audio space. And so we've taken that and over the years, obviously evolved that and really taken in all the feedback from not only our users, but from the auto industry. You know, the vehicles are getting harder and harder to work on. Integrating into OEM systems is not as easy as it used to be, obviously. And so we really try to pack as much of that into our DSPs as possible to try to help installers overcome those challenges. Um, you know, an easy to use GUI is an important part of that. We want techs to feel confident using our products. And that's really what we've geared this towards is making sure that um, you know, whether it's a entry level tech or a 
pro that's been in the industry for years, or even a consumer for that matter, our, our DSP software is something that they can use and understand. And, you know, nobody wants to spend hours and hours and hours tuning a car, um, whether they feel they need to or not. Uh, especially in the retail space, we need to be able to get these cars set up, tuned, dialed in and sounding great in less time so that we can be more efficient and make more money, right? Um, so with that, you know, Audio Control's whole philosophy is making good sound great. That's kind of our tagline. And we really feel that our DSPs do that as well as our DSP amplifiers. So obviously one of the most exciting things is the latest revision to the DM Smart software that Audio Control just released. And for record, we're talking about the latest version, which is the V2.03 version. Um, and it's kind of simple. I mean, no, it's not kind of simple. It absolutely is simple because we're breaking it down for you real easy. This is not a drawn out DSP walkthrough training session. We're gonna give this to you high level with points that you need to know in three different phases. Phase one is gonna be about the input stage. Phase two, we're gonna be talking about the output view. And then the last, we're gonna tie it all together in the dashboard view. So Matt, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Let's talk about some of these cool features in the input view. Yeah, Ben, that's a great idea. I mean, the software is divided into three sections, which is one of the things that makes it so simple. So let's dive right into the input view first. So one of the first things you'll notice when you take a look at our input view is how simply everything's laid out. You know, we didn't make a ton of changes to this view because it was already pretty awesome, to be honest. Um, but when you look at our input section, you'll notice that all of your channels are now labeled for you. We have defaulted them to commonly used inputs. If you aren't going to use them that way, so you don't want to follow our recommended naming, that's fine. You can certainly rename these just by double clicking on a channel and typing in a new label like so and you can rename them really easily. But if you are new to DSP, maybe you wanna follow those default tags and just make sure that you connect your inputs to how the software is laid out for your inputs and outputs. So in this case, if you're gonna follow those, let's say we're gonna put this back to tweeter for one and two, you just wanna make sure that the factory channels uh, that, that run the tweeters in your factory system are connected to inputs one and two, factory mid ranges are to three and four, so on and so forth. In this section, you also have your input gain, pretty, sta uh, pretty standard, straightforward there. It does have a clipping light built in as well. But my favorite part is the built-in electrical RTA. So as you bring in all these channels from your factory system, you can play pink noise and actually see the signal right down here in your RTA. So as you're looking at this, you're gonna be able to know whether you have a signal that is you know, already crossed over or maybe it's a signal that has some sort of base roll off or pre-equalization from the factory. All those sorts of things are gonna be very evident when you're looking at that input view and that input RTA. So then once you've taken a look at all of your inputs while playing pink noise, you're ready to move on to your output view. All right, so next in the software is the output view. So in output view or the output tab of DM Smart DSP, this is where the majority of our changes have taken place. Again, you'll notice all your output channels are already default named for you. Now in the output view, it becomes even more important if you're new to DSP to follow those uh, labels and make sure that your outputs are connected appropriately. So if you're doing an active setup using a DM810 standalone DSP, like I'm showing you right now, you'd want to make sure that channels one and two are indeed feeding signal out to your amplifier that's going to run your tweeters. If this is not the way you're going to configure your system, again, remember, you can easily rename any of those little tags up there. But let's just go with the default settings for now. So the first thing you'll notice is we took your input. When we look at our tags and naming throughout the software, Software, there's a lot of little changes that took place in here. Instead of calling this output summing, we now call it signal summing because it just makes more sense and it's easier for most folks to understand. So what this is really doing is showing just where do I want my signal that's going to feed out to one and two channel outputs? Where do I want that to come from? In this case, I want it to come from channels one and two, so it's already highlighted. If I needed to sum channels one, two, and three, and four together, all I have to do is click 3.4, and now they're summed. Pretty straightforward. But let's talk about some of the changes that were made in this section. So when you look at your crossover section, I mentioned that you know we have updated the crossover section because of input from our users. So if we look here, you'll notice that it's already defaulted for you again. So this is an output channel for tweeters. So it's already high passed at 3.5K on up. 
But you might notice if you've used our software before, this section used to only go to 20K. Now, if you drag it past 20K, it goes to bypass. So if you are doing a high res system, we're no longer limiting you on how high you can play. Let's take a look at maybe the sub channel for a second though. So if we look at the subwoofer channel, it's been defaulted to grab signal from input number six and play out to output number 10, pretty straightforward. But if you look at the crossover, it's set up as a 24 dB low pass at 25 Hertz, right? So we're playing 25, or excuse me, uh, 90 Hertz, playing 90 on down. But we are also rolling it off at 25. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe I have big woofers and lots of power, and so I want it to play all the way down. If you drag this slider, we can go down to 20, or we can go down to bypass and just get rid of the crossover altogether. So for you big bass guys, it's easy to do. We still have our standard uh, signal delay section here. That's really easy to, to put in. You just enter in your inches. You don't have to do any math. Let's look at a stereo output channel though, like the mid range. Again, you'll notice our crossovers have been set up to be a band pass playing from 300 to 3.5K, pretty easy. But something that we added that a lot of you asked for was the ability to flip phase independently. So now on this channel here on channel three, I can flip it or I can flip it on channel four really, really easily. No longer are they grouped together. The next section down, you have whether you want this channel to be controlled by the ACR3. Do I want it to be a mono channel? Do I want to link it to another channel? But then I get into my AccuBase. AccuBase is a patented tech by audio control. It's for restoring bass that was lost due to bass roll off. We have lots of videos and information on that if you want to learn more. And then we get down to our EQ section. Again, many of you asked us for a parametric EQ and we listened. So now you have not only your GEQ or graphic EQ, you also have parametric and you can adjust the Q of each band by dragging these little red dots right here. So we can adjust the Q or we can just slide those and we can adjust the band by clicking and dragging on each one of those. So you either have a 10 band parametric or a 30 band uh, graphic EQ at your disposal. And again, this also has the output RTA in it as well. So the RTA is going to overlay over this section of the EQ, showing you your changes as you make them. The last section in this portion that I'm going to show you is if we go into the tools menu, we can also click enable all pass filters. And now if we scroll up a little bit, you'll notice that AccuBase only takes up half the screen and the other half gives you all pass. This is an advanced feature, not something for the everyday consumer or the entry level tech, but if you know what you're doing with all pass filters and how to use them, you have up to two filters per output channel and they can be a first order or second order all pass. Pretty cool. Hey man, I'm gonna take a second here and give a high five to the engineers and programmers at Audio Control. Definitely listen, I remember even not that long ago when you came on, and one of the questions we were talking about was that phase feature where they were paired and now they are independently controllable. And yes, all pass filter. So for those guys that really want to get in there and tweak it, well, you got both your first order, second order. Again, props for listening and improving um, this software. Now, we're going to get into the final stage of um, this GUI, uh, and, and that is the dashboard view. Yeah, Ben, we really try to listen to our users and you know take their feedback and implement it into the software as much as we can. So when we look at our software, the DM Smart DSP app, you know, a lot of techs like using the input view. They analyze their inputs, set all that up, then they move to their outputs and go through all of that, dial in everything, and that's where they stop. They save it to their DSP presets and they move on. Some techs prefer to just use the dashboard view, which is a really cool feature in our software. And it basically gives you the ability to see everything coming in and going out all in one view for those that don't like to switch between tabs. So let's take a look at the dashboard view now and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so here we are in the dashboard view. Like I said, this gives you pretty much everything on an input and output section all at once. So right up at the top here, we have our output RTA where you can see exactly what that output signal looks like. And what's cool is you can just click around in the software and it's gonna show it to you here. So if I click on output five, six, let's say, when I go to my dashboard view, I can see everything happening from the output EQ and output RTA at the same time. Now remember the EQ on these channels is grouped together. So for in this example, we're looking at outputs 5-6 for the mid bass. 
we currently have the EQ grouped for those two channels. So you're EQing channels five and six at the same time. If I did want to separate them, all I have to do is click one or two rather than it being one and two together. And now we have separate EQs. You'll also notice over here on the side that it separated my levels. So now I have an independent level for channel five versus channel six. Pretty easy, but still gives you the ability to do those higher level features that the more advanced DSP tech is looking for. Same thing as I look down the way here, I have my crossover, my delay setup, AccuBase, and all pass filters. So the cool thing is I can go through here, make changes, do whatever I want to do as far as setting up my DSP. And I can see those changes happen in real time in my output RTA and this output EQ. Now, when I go to my um, upper part of the software here in the dashboard view, I also have my DSP presets. You can, of course, name these by just double clicking on where it says memory one, memory two, et cetera. So let's say this is going to be my SQ tune and you know preset two is gonna be my SPL tune, something like that. It's really easy to name them and save them. If I'm in the software right now connected to a product and I do wanna save, all I've gotta do is press and hold on the number and it's gonna ask me, do I wanna overwrite? And I'll say yes, and away we go. Speaking of saving, one feature that I can't really show you, but I would love to share with the, the group here is that we implemented an auto save feature that saves your work in the background as you're going. So again, you know, just an example of us listening to our users and feedback. So many times we would have users tell us that, you know, I was tuning a vehicle for two hours and the car's battery died or my other tech in the bay walked by and kicked the USB cable and unplugged it and I lost all my work. It was so frustrating. So what we did is we built in an auto save backup feature so that as you're working, it's constantly saving your work kind of um, in limbo, so to speak. It's not overriding your presets for you, but it is saving it in the background. So God forbid the cable comes unplugged, the car's battery dies, it's a push to start car and it times out, whatever the case may be, what it'll do is it'll just pop up a window and tell you, hey, we noticed that the cable's unplugged or there's a connection issue. And it just kind of waits for you to restore the connection. As soon as you get that cable plugged back in or the, ca the car powered back on, um, it's going to restore that connection and you can just pick up right where you left off. It's such a game changer and a time saver for us. Um, and a lot of the features that people loved about audio controls, DM Smart DSP are still here. Your file manager, the ability to save tunes and things like that are all still there. But we've really tried to improve as much as we could in this software, you know, with the current hardware products we offer. Um, one other thing I'll mention real quick is for those of you out there who have tried our software before and we're trying to use it with the AC BT24, our little Bluetooth adapter. Maybe you had a less than stellar experience in the past. We took that feedback and really put a lot of time, money, and effort into improving that. Never before has our software been better and more reliable than it is today, whether you're plugged in with USB or using it over Bluetooth. And one little extra bonus feature we built in is for you Android tablet users. If you have an Android tablet and you don't want to use a laptop to tune your DM Smart DSP product, you can now use a USB, probably USB-C if you have a modern Android tablet, USB-C to micro cable and plug straight into the DSP as if it were a laptop, plug that into your Android tablet and the software will run via a hardwired connection cable no Bluetooth necessary, and you can have that same laptop or desktop style experience on an Android tablet. So we built that in as an extra cool little thing. And for the Mac users out there, you can now Bluetooth from a Mac wirelessly to the DSPs when using an ACBT24. The software automatically searches for a local Bluetooth connection when it first fires up. So lots of cool new tech packed into this uh, software and a lot of amazing features that are gonna make so many installers' lives that much easier in just making these cars go from sounding good to sounding great. All right, shifting our conversation, Matt, from the software side of things to the hardware side of things, I think Audio Control made this really simple. From what I understand, we've got uh, some products which are standalone uh, signal processors. And then, of course, the very popular DSP amplifier combo all in one box. So break it down for us. Um, what is the catalog and what consists uh, as far as the DSP offering from audio control? 
Yeah, Ben, you're absolutely right. We separated into two categories. So we have products that are standalone DSPs like the DM608 and DM810. Those are going to be just a DSP. Great if you're going to do multiple, multiple amplifiers. Um, if you want the absolute biggest, best performance in a system, you're going for the high end, you're going to want to look at a standalone DSP because it gives you more selection with what amplifiers, how many channels, that sort of thing. Also, our DM608 and DM810 are the only products currently that offer our optical input, toss link style, and digital coaxial input. Um, in the standalone amplifier integrated DSP category, we have three models. We have a six channel, a five channel, and a four channel. The D6.1200, D5.1300, and D4.800. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about the D6.1200 because I happen to have one right here. So with the D6.1200, um, it's a great amplifier. It's one of our most popular models. And with this piece, it packs a serious punch. 1200 watts RMS integrated power. So you've got up to 200 watts per channel at two ohm. Those are all RMS numbers. Audio control doesn't do peak power or max power numbers. We never have. Um, so that's a real power rating and we tend to underrate things a little bit. So the cool thing about a D6.1200 is it's super versatile. You know, this can be a six channel, it can be a five channel, a four channel, a three channel. You can configure it just about however you want. Um, and besides that, so it's, it's, you know, it's an awesome system building amplifier. So a lot of guys will run it as a five channel to begin with. And then when they can afford to do so, they add a separate sub amplifier and then they go active on their front stage. It's perfect for that. It's also great for doing an active three-way front stage where you have tons of power for mid bass, mid range and tweeters. But one of the really cool things on this amplifier that makes it installer friendly and uh, system builder friendly is a couple of things. One, all your connections are on one end. You know, not only do you have heavy gauge power and ground taking up to a one watt power and ground input, um, you also have your host of RCA inputs here and a set of RCA outputs. So what are those RCA outputs all about? That's for when you want to add that separate sub amplifier and be able to control that DSP, uh, excuse me, control that sub amplifier from the DSP. So you don't have to buy a DSP multi-channel and a DSP sub amplifier. You can just buy a DSP multi-channel DSP the whole system, but by a, you know, let's call it a dumb sub amplifier, uh, which makes, you know, saving money a little bit easier and makes configuring it a little bit easier too, because you're doing it all from one piece of software. It's also great for adding a couple of extra rear channels. Maybe you have some rear fill that you want to add a small two channel for or something like that. Um, but one of the things that makes our D series amplifiers special and unique from everyone else is their input stage. And here's what I mean. When we're doing a factory integration style setup, you'll notice that there are eight channels of high level input here. But wait, this is a six channel amplifier, right? The reason we have eight channels of input is that you can do signal summing and everything internally. So we can bring in you know, multiple channels like factory front top dash signals that are maybe high frequency only, front door signals, rear door signals, and then also bring in a factory sub or factory center channel, uh, D pillars in an SUV, whatever those extra channels are, bring all those channels into this system. And now using that input view we just talked about, you can look at what those signals look like and quickly make a choice about what's gonna best be applicable to your system and useful to get the best sound possible out of your setup. So those are just a couple of things that make these amplifiers so special. And this D61200 is no exception. Um, there's a reason it's one of our best sellers, Ben. It is a serious, serious combination of power, control, flexibility, and integration. It packs a punch, that's for sure. That there was audio control product specialist, Matthew Palumbo, laying it down, showing us the whole walkthrough on the brand new version of the GUI and the software, and as well as you know a quick overview of the nice product selection they have within the DSP category. Now, if you want more information on any of the products covered on today's show, make sure you check out the official website found at audiocontrol.com. Now, if you happen to be a dealer in Canada tuning in and you're like, yes, give me some audio control action, you need to get a hold of the folks at GemSend. On that note, we reached out to GemSend's national sales manager, Mr. Dave Singh, to get a little bit of input from a Canadian perspective. Hey, Ben, thanks for having me uh, back on to do this audio control session. You know, GemSend and audio control have been partners for a number of years, and we're so excited by the continued 
addition to the audio control family, whether it be new products or revamps to existing products, such as some of the software. You know, we just see nothing but endless possibilities coming down the road for audio control. And we're just really excited to be part of this. All right, Dave, let's get your opinion on this. In the Canadian landscape, you know our dealers. Why do you feel audio control is such a perfect choice for retailers out there, especially when there's just so much options um, currently in the DSP segment? Well, Ben, that's a great question, and you're right. You know, there's no shortage of DSP products out there. But I think what uh, gives audio control an advantage over uh, the competition is their heritage. Audio control has been around for 40 years plus, and uh, they definitely have very deep roots in signal processing. I think all of us that have been doing this for quite some time can remember, you know, doing uh, SPL competitions or tweaking tunes in the parking lot where the measurement device of choice was uh, SA3052. And uh, that's the RTA SPL meter. Audio control still has devices like that. They've got an SA4100 and a 4140, which is an iOS type device. Uh, they've got the DMRTA kit, which is you know one of the uh, coolest devices out there for system measurement. But they've taken all of these cool tools that they've developed and pioneered and taken that technology and integrated it into their existing products. And as Matt was showing in his uh, discussion you know, you have the ability to look at what you're dealing with when it comes to input signals and output signals. And that's really important because when we're dealing with tuning a car, you need to know what you're playing with and uh, what you need to adjust. You need to identify, you know, any issues and uh, be able to make those adjustments. And visually is one of the best ways. Hopefully, you know, some of us have great ears and can do it by ear, but there's nothing better than visually looking at an RTA and identifying those signals and making those adjustments. So having that advantage in signal processing and uh, measurement and incorporating that into, into Audio Control's products is one of the biggest benefits that Audio Control brings to the table. And we're just super excited that they continue to build upon that, those platforms that they have. Certainly, Dave, the heritage of Audio Control is simply not deniable. But let's take a second and uh, pick your brain here. Are there a couple features that you could name here that dealers really should pay attention to when it comes to what the audio control DSP system offers? You know, there's a number of cool features that uh, are fantastic, but the two particular ones that stand out in my mind, uh, number one is a high input, high input voltage capability. Um, audio control is known for the LC2i for, you know, a number of years being the the, the LOC of choice, uh, all of those devices can accept 40 volts, and it just makes sense that the audio control amplifiers and uh, DSP units can accept that same type of voltage input. We're dealing with cars nowadays that have big amplifiers, lots of output, and you need to have hardware that can accept high amounts of voltage. So 40 volts of input voltage is pretty impressive. One of the other things that stands out in my mind is the amount of signal uh, summon capability that's incorporated into the units. We would expect DSP units to have signal summing, but on the audio control amplifiers, that is in integrated into the amplifier. So when you're using their DSP amplifiers, you do not need to have a different device to sum signals. It's all incorporated into the amplifier. In fact, a six channel amplifier gives you eight channels of signal input summing capability to ensure that that factory amp has got high pass, a mid range, maybe a band pass, and a subwoofer. That all of those can be combined to give you a nice flat uh, full range signal. So, having that incorporated into the amplifiers is another thing uh, that's important. And it also will make it, um, it a little bit easier for guys to do these installs because you don't have those awkward situations where you may have sold an amplifier, then realize after getting into the car that you need other pieces of a hardware like uh, a summing device or a high input uh, voltage uh, uh, LLC, all that is built into the amplifier. And of course, Matthew also mentioned AccuBase, which is a patented feature that helps reverse the factory base rollout. So those are really cool uh, items that are incorporated into the audio control DSP products that dealers should definitely remember. I want to take this opportunity and thank my two guests today, both Matthew Palumbo from Audio Control, as well as Dave Singh from Gemsen. In my closing comments, when it comes to audio control and DSP, well, the answer is literally simple. 
This is one of the most simple systems that either installers, technicians, or even consumers can get their hands on to really dial in their system. It's evident in the way the new GUI operates. It's a simple three-page menu, input-output dashboard. It literally does not get easier than this. I want to commend Audio Control for listening to the customers, listening to the technicians, and making the adjustments required to improve that GUI and really take it to that next level. Beyond that, the hardware, the sound quality when it comes to audio control, the OEM integration input features, as well as just the pure performance and the power of these amplifiers makes this a sure winner for either pros and noobs alike. That's it for this CMA Connected brought to you by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. There's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with over 150 channels in your vehicle. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM video on demand. What you love is on now.